the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, and tonight we'll be discussing MassDOT's uh, fiscal year 25 through 29 draft capital investment plan uh, with some highlights specific to Western Massachusetts. So again, thank you for being here. To get things started, I'll turn things over to my colleague, Raisa Kwame, who will review the meeting procedures. Thank you, Michelle. My name is Raisa Kwame, and I am one of the MassDOT producers this evening alongside Miranda Bresenio, who will help facilitate the question and comment session. Let's take a minute to review your Zoom controls. On the bottom of your screen, you will find your audio settings. Your microphones are muted during the meeting, but you will have the opportunity to speak during the questions and comments session at the end of the presentation by using the raise hand function to indicate you wish to speak. If you have questions or comments during the presentation, you can put them in the chat box and we will address them during the question and comment session. If you need to attend the meeting by phone, please dial 1-646-931-3860 and enter meeting ID H H four nine one three four one zero seven eight. If you're experiencing technical difficulties and require assistance, please dial 857-276-0893. Finally, you may view live closed captioning generated by Zoom by selecting the CC icon at the bottom of your screen. Meeting notes and procedures. This virtual meet public meeting will be recorded. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation may choose to retain and distribute the video, images, audio, and or chat transcript. All parts of this meeting are considered public record. By continuing attendance with this virtual public meeting, you are consenting to participate in a recorded event. If you are not comfortable being recorded, please turn off your camera and keep your microphone muted, or you may choose to excuse yourself from the meeting. Important notes. Your microphone and camera are automatically disabled upon entering the meeting. The meeting will be open to questions and answers at the end of the presentation. Your feedback is important. All MassDOT activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. MassDOT complies with all federal and state civil rights requirements preventing discrimination based on sex, race, color, ancestry, national origin, limited English proficiency, religion, creed, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, or veteran status. We welcome the diversity from across our entire service area. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit this website to reach the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. I will now hand it back over to Michelle. Thank you. Thanks for covering that for us, Raisa. Um, so before we get started with the formal presentation, I'm uh, just going to have a quick welcome from the Metropolitan Planning Organization staff um, that represent the organizations that oversee the spending of federal funds in Western Massachusetts. There are partners in uh, hosting this public meeting this evening. Um, they include uh, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, uh, the Pioneer Valley um, MPO, and the Berkshire MPO. So next I'll... Um, turn things over um, for the presentation this evening uh, to our partners. I'll start with um, Beth Giannini from the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Hi, thank you, Michelle. Um, my name is Beth Giannini. I'm the Transportation Program Manager at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Um, we're happy to be hosting this meeting um, to receive input on the capital investment plan along with our colleagues from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, the um, Franklin Regional Council of Governments is the, um, is the regional planning agency for Franklin County, which are the 26 towns um, in Franklin County. They, they um, in central, sort of central Western Mass, um, centered around Greenfield, Massachusetts. And um, we go as far east as Orange and as far west as the town of Charlemont, and then down along Route 91 to um, Waitley and border with Hampshire County to the south. Um, so um, again, we act as the regional planning agencies and program through our our tip process for um, the towns and projects in Franklin County. And we're happy to hear input on the CIP 
um, from, from anyone at this meeting and happy to participate with our colleagues. And I will um, turn it over to Andy McCall from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, to provide his welcome. Uh, thank you, Beth. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending this uh, uh, meeting tonight. Uh, I got an Andrew McCall. I'm a senior transportation planner at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, we're the staff of the Pioneer Valley Metropolitan Planning Organization, uh, which uh, oversees our transportation planning process for the 43 municipalities, uh, which encompass all of Hampshire and Hamden County. Uh, again, uh, the MPO just recently approved our transportation improvement program. Uh, we fund around $34 million a year in uh, road, uh, road, bicycle, pedestrian, um, intersection improvements, um, as well as an additional uh, pot of money that goes to the transit authority um, in the range of 30 to $35 million a year, uh, plus additional statewide items that MassDOT approves for our region. Uh, again, that was just approved. That document then is included in the state transportation improvement program, which uh, goes directly into the CIP. Uh, the CIP for me or for our agency is, it has been a great tool over the last eight or nine years as it's evolved through time. Uh, it's a great uh, a tool that we can take and explain to our uh, chief elected officials and other uh, municipal employees about, you know, maybe why their project isn't getting funded immediately upon, you know, completion of design. We can kind of show them, here's how much money we get, here how, here's how much money is available throughout the state. And it really helps us put, put in perspective, you know, we get a lot of money in this region, but if you look about at the priorities statewide, you know, there's a lot of money being invested in, in our infrastructure across the entire state. And it helps, so it just helps us. It's another tool that we use. Um, and then I will hand it off to uh, Berkshire County now. So thanks again, everyone. Um, thank you, Andy. Uh, uh, I'm Anuja Karala. I'm a principal transportation planner at uh, Berkshire Regional Planning Commission. Uh, the transportation team at uh, BRPC is the staff to the Berkshire MPO. And the Berkshire MPO consists of uh, 32 towns in Berkshire County. And I also coordinate the transportation improvement uh, program for the Berkshire County. Uh, the Berkshire MPO recently endorsed the 2529 transportation improvement plan, which as Andy said, it, it's incorporated into statewide transportation improvement plan and then into the CIP. Uh, for our 2529 transportation plan, we have around 290 millions of program for the next five years of investment transportation investments in Berkshire County, uh, which includes the bridges, um, highways, uh, bike, bike trail projects, and also the transits. So welcome everyone, and thank you for participating in this IP process. And I turn it over to Michelle, thank you. Thanks so much, Beth, Andy, and Anuja. Um, so with that, I'll get going with the presentation. So the slide on the screen highlights kind of the three major points I hope folks will come away with uh, from the discussion this evening, even though we'll be providing a lot more detail on each. Um, so the, the Capital Investment Plan, or CIP for short, is, guides the planning, construction, and capital maintenance for uh, the Commonwealth's transportation system for the next five years. Um, it's a plan we update every year. Um, so Input and feedback is a really important uh, component of how we do this um, at multiple levels, uh, starting from the, the high level of creating investment strategies, um, establishing individual programs to fund uh, transportation priorities and feeding down into project selection. Um, so with that in mind, you know, we'll talk about how other input feeds, you know, the CIP development process throughout but um, we're coming to the conclusion of the development process for this cycle. And so a draft fiscal year 25 through 29 CIP is now available. Um, but again, there's still opportunity for public review and comment on this plan. We have a comment period open from June 20th to July 10th. So we hope you'll review the plan and provide feedback. So some more details about the CIP at a high level. So again, this is a rolling plan um, updated every year. Um, it is fiscally constrained to the resources that we have for funding transportation. Um, it reflects spending on, on projects and the cash flow 
of that spending over time. So projects may be carried forward from CIP to CIP, uh, depending on how long it takes to construct or implement them. There's a wide variety of investments included in the CIP, um, roads and bridges, bicycle and pedestrian facilities, uh, state funded transit, uh, both on the MBTA side and the RTA side. Um, the statewide rail network um, includes investments for that, public use airports, uh, MassDOT wide enterprise services, and funding for the registry of motor vehicles. The slide, uh, excuse me, the diagram on the right hand portion of the slide shows the uh, framework we used to construct the CIP and that we've used in recent years. It's based on three major priority areas, reliability, modernization, and expansion, with reliability really focused on maintaining condition, modernization, taking things up a level by making the system safer, more accessible, and more accommodating to growth. And then for expansion, um, expanding transportation options. And this category um, is primarily focused uh, at this point in time on expanding the state's bicycle and pedestrian network and uh, state rail network. So within each of these major priority areas, we have investment programs um, that are essentially buckets for in which we have our individual uh, CIP investments, different types of projects and things of that nature. And some examples of these are highlighted on the screen. So we fund the CIP through a variety of different sources and the four major categories are shown on the screen here. Uh, federal funding is a major category for us, um, both uh, funds that we see, receive uh, in Massachusetts on a regular basis from the USDOT modal administrations. Um, it's also comprised of the uh, funding that Massachusetts may be awarded from competitive federal grant programs. And so if we were to win a, an award for some of these programs, the funds are included in the CIP following that award. Uh, for state funding, we have um, state bond cap, and that's generally referring to the uh, general obligation bond proceeds that are allocated to MassDOT for things like matching federal dollars or supporting specific programs like Chapter 90. Other state funding includes uh, special obligation bonds, and these are bonds issued for really specific types of projects like bridges in the case of the Accelerated Bridge or Next Generation Bridge Program or the Rail Enhancement Program. Um, we can also uh, issue certain types of notes that allow us to bond against future federal funding. Uh, for MassDOT, our own sources are what we call pay-go sources that are generated from the revenues from the various tolled facilities, including the Metropolitan Highway System, the Western Turnpike, and the Tobin Bridge. And these funds are invested back into maintaining these facilities. And finally, in that other sources category, uh, we have third-party, local, um, uh, in other categories, kind of like the Central Artery Tunnel Project Repair and Maintenance Fund. So collectively, these comprise the funding that we can draw upon for funding transportation investments. So for developing uh, the 25 to 29 CIP, uh, there are a number of internal and external factors that shaped our approach. On the external side, we have uh, federal policy and funding levels, and these are set most recently by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. Uh, this law enacted in 2021 not only boosted the available of federal funding for transportation and other types of infrastructure, but also created a number of new programs and policies, such as those for climate, uh, decarbonization, and resiliency that shape how we invest in the transportation system. The Commonwealth level, um, we're guided by the, the levels of funding that is available um, through both state sources and our, our toll revenues. We're continuing to evolve, uh, respond to evolving travel demands, conditions, and needs. Uh, we're, you know, heavily influenced by our partner agency planning processes, um, including those carried out by the Metropolitan Planning Organizations, the MBTA, and the RTAs. Uh, also, as I alluded to earlier, feedback, um, both recent and um, collected during the development process, informs how we create the CIP. On the internal side, uh, the priorities of the Healy Driscoll administration uh, really guide the work that we're doing, both through an increased emphasis on climate, safety, and partnerships with municipalities. Um, planning within MassDOT uh, also influences the work that we're doing. Uh, you may be familiar with MassDOT's um, statewide long-range transportation plan, Beyond Mobility. Uh, the public comment period for that document recently closed. Um, and once finalized, this plan um, will go on to inform CIPs and hasn't had an influence on this one as well in terms of our, our major focus areas for investment. 
other initiatives, such as uh, the development of MassDOT strategic operations plan and um, and our transportation funding task force will also, you know, continue to influence the capital investment process. Um, we also look to our modal and asset management plans, uh, performance measures, and identified process improvements when creating the CIP. So just to talk a little bit more about focus areas, again, in, informed by uh, federal and state uh, guidance and priorities, we have five, which are highlighted on this slide. Um, they include safety, climate stewardship, um, focusing not only on decarbonization, but also resiliency, asset management for safe and reliable travel, uh, and partnerships with municipalities uh, to improve local quality of life and economic competitiveness. And kind of as a cross-cutting theme, we have a focus on social and geographic equity across investment areas. So I wanna talk a little bit more of some of the specific factors I alluded to on the previous slide. Um, so we talked a lot about factors that certainly um, invest affect, excuse me, higher level strategy for the CIP. Um, there are also some more uh, detailed factors that can influence the um, inclusion of specific projects within the CIP at a given point in time. And uh, Andy alluded uh, to some of these in his opening remarks. Um, so for our reliability projects, um, we're guided by asset management systems that help prioritize um, you know, immediate state of good repair and condition needs and where those are, are located on different piece of in, pieces of infrastructure throughout the state. Um, for some of our modernization and expansion processes, we look to project selection criteria um, that focus on a number of different themes and priority areas and use scores from those systems as part of the project um, selection process. And then of course, the status of the project in terms of whether it's been initiated through the relevant process, um, whether uh, how far it's advanced in design or implementation also influences uh, when we can include it in the CIP. And of course, the, the decisions by our partner agencies, um, such as the MPOs also influence um, what goes into the CIP. And Andy again alluded to some of this in his remarks. So the slide on the right-hand portion of the screen shows specifically for those projects uh, that are programmed by the, the MPOs, the federal aided highway and um, the state match portion of the, the transit programs are included in the CIP. You can see those in the boxes highlighted in green with the boxes in blue showing other components of the MassDOT-CIP. And these boxes are roughly proportional to the uh, um, size of these investments within the overall CIP. So you can see that these uh, <clears throat> MPO components are a really important part of um, the overall CIP. So if you um, are involved in your MPO's uh, regional planning process, and if you're not already, we definitely encourage you to do so. You know, your feedback and, and engagement with that process does go on to inform what's in the MassDOT CIP. So just a, a quick cap snapshot of our timeline for developing the CIP. We do this over a nine to 10 month period starting in the fall. Um, the colored bars highlight the major steps and you can see they cover long time periods to, which reflects the iterative nature of bringing in new information um, and conversations to develop these various steps starting from strategy down through refining our funding resources and selecting investments. We're now in that final stage of uh, finalizing the plan with our public comment period having started last week. The stars on this diagram highlight um, our interactions with the MassDOT Board of Directors, who is responsible for approving the final plan. Uh, they approved the document for release for public review and comment at their meeting last Tuesday, and we will be bringing a final CIP for their meeting in July, which is scheduled for July 17th. So this slide is our spending dashboard of sorts and shows the distribution of funds uh, within the CIP. Uh, that top table is organized by our major priority areas, reliability, modernization, and expansion, and by um, MassDOT divisions. Um, you'll notice that there is some spending for the MBTA included in uh, the overall CIP. These are spending specifically from state sources, such as um, uh, rail enhancement program funding or bond cap, and I'll talk a little bit more about MBTA investments shortly. That bottom table on the right uh, shows is the overall size of the CIP, which is about $16.5 billion. And that donut chart in the lower left shows the portion of spending 
uh, across the priority areas with roughly 61% focused on reliability and another 23% focused on modernization. So some more details about what's included in the CIP, it's made up of over 50 investment programs and more than 1,600 individual investments. This figure is probably closer to around 1,700. Um, within the investment program side, we've created new programs this year focused on freight, on movement along the uh, National Highway Freight Network, uh, grants for transportation management associations, and a water transportation pilot program. Uh, the diagram on the right-hand side shows the top 10 uh, MassDOT-CIP programs by their spending level. You can see that far and away the largest program is the bridge program focused on rehabilitating, replacing, or otherwise improving bridges throughout the Commonwealth. You can see that the, the next nine or so are reflective of different categories ranging from bridges to Chapter 90 to um, bicycle and pedestrian and intersection improvements. Uh, we have approximately 847 million in the CIP supporting MBTA investments and approximately 269 million of spending in the CIP is supported by federal competitive grant awards. So a little bit more about spending in the key focus areas that I mentioned earlier. Um, already talked about the bridge program. We also have um, over 500 million for public use airport capital improvements. Um, with respect to safety, we have safety investments integrated through a lot of CIP programs, but um, to complement this, we have 144 million in a safety improvements program. It really focuses on making systematic roadway safety improvements uh, to complement upgrades being made through other projects to help reduce um, fatalities and serious injuries for, throughout the Commonwealth. On the climate stewardship side, we think of these investments, kind of three categories. Uh, the first is reducing car and truck travel. And to do this, we support uh, 565 million in active transportation oriented programs, uh, 439 million investments in our rail network, and another 30, 370 million in RTA and local transit investments designed to provide alternatives um, that can be used for passengers or for freight. Uh, we, for our resiliency, we have approximately 82 million in a dedicated highway resiliency program for things like uh, culvert improvements. And then for um, expanding electrification, particularly charging near major roadways, uh, we have another 89 million uh, for that. For partnerships with municipalities, we have uh, over 1.3 billion in grant programs. Let's talk a little bit more about that partnerships with municipalities piece. The table on the right shows um, various uh, programs, uh, one of them being Chapter 90, of course, which is by far the largest. Um, we've been able to boost that a little bit in recent years um, with uh, the next couple of years with approximately 205 million per year. Uh, the other items in that table uh, include the longstanding Complete Streets program, programs for municipal bridge and pavement, uh, reducing local bottlenecks, and the Shared Streets and Spaces program, which was initiated during the COVID-19 pandemic and provided um, opportunities for um, investment in um, expanding, improving streets for bicycle and pedestrian movement, for um, supporting outdoor dining and transit access and things of that nature. And that you know, program has continued to be very popular. Um, you can learn more about each of these individual programs through MassDOT's new Grant Central online portal. Um, it's uh, kind of a one-stop shop for more information, for processes for applying and working with MassDOT um, on uh, applications and awards for these programs. So you can scan the QR code there to check out uh, more information about that. So I alluded uh, before to uh, state funded items for the MBTA. I do wanna note that the MBTA creates a separate capital investment plan. Um, there is some overlap between their plan and MassDOT's plan, again, focusing on those state funded transit investments that I mentioned. Um, so that 847 million is primarily funded by rail enhancement program funds uh, with a mix of dollars from other sources. Some major highlights within that include 62 million for bi-level commuter rail coaches, um, another 143 million for spending for South Coast Rail, um, 335 million for red and orange line vehicle procurements, and a number of other items in that category. So starting from here, I wanna talk a little bit about some highlights specifically for Western Massachusetts. And so, um, 
The next couple slides will highlight investments in a couple different categories. Um, this is by no means meant to be comprehensive, and I'll talk a little bit more at the end of the presentation how you can explore the CIP to learn more about other projects that are happening in the area. But um, you know, we'll provide a couple highlights here. One thing to note, and as noted at the bottom of the slide, is that the values here reflect um, spending for FY25 to 29, depending on um, you know, when the project is advertised or getting underway um, and, the, and uh, other related timing factors, this may not be the total cost of the project. And you can uh, learn more in the uh, CIP document. And again, I'll explain how to do that. Uh, so for a couple of different categories, um, this slide highlights roadway and bridge investments. Um, examples include uh, the bridge replacement for I-391 over um, Chicopee Street and Chicopee. Um, examples, uh, other examples include uh, reconstruction of Sumner Avenue at Dickinson Street and Belmont Avenue or the X Project in Springfield, um, along with a variety of other uh, local roadway investments to improve intersections or bridges. Um, in our climate and resiliency category, again, I alluded to um, you know, finding ways to decarbonize. And one example is um, support for electrification for our regional transit authorities, so highlighted here. Uh, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority support for electric buses. Um, on the resiliency side, examples of culvert replacements in Stockbridge um, to help improve um, you know, stormwater management and flood control and things like that. Uh, in the active transportation category, we have some examples of uh, Safe Rocks Scroll and uh, trail construction on Aguam and Southampton. And then on the uh, air and transit side, you know, we have some examples, uh, again, for the RTAs for vehicle and facility improvements. Uh, here we have an example of aeronautics investments with the reconstruction of taxiways at Westover Airport. And I'll talk a little bit more about rail on the next slide. So this slide, I um, want to talk a little bit about Compass Rail. Um, and again, this is the a vision for inner city passenger rail across Massachusetts and beyond. Uh, as shown in the map on the right-hand portion of the screen, this includes west, east, and north-south service throughout the Commonwealth. And so I want to highlight a couple investments in the 25 to 29 uh, CIP designed to advance Compass Rail, specifically uh, east west-east rail service. Uh, these include track improvements between Springfield and Worcester, uh, as supported by a, a recent federal grant uh, for the inland route. Uh, Palmer Station Planning and Design, Pittsfield Track Capacity Improvements, uh, Preliminary Engineering and Environmental Work for Springfield Track Reconfiguration, and uh, planning for additional train service between um, Boston and Albany running through Springfield. These are, um, while these are kind of specific highlights, do want to acknowledge that other investments that support Compass Rail are integrated throughout MassDOT's various rail programs, um, including those that support track condition, bridges, grade crossings, and uh, other aspects of our rail system. So winding down, talking a little bit more about how you can explore the CIP um, at mass.gov slash CIP. Uh, you can find a version of this draft document uh, in a couple formats on our Developing the Capital Investment Plan page. Um, it's available in PDF as well as an Esri story map that lets you explore some of the uh, different programs and spending levels in more detail through interactive visualizations. Uh, the main document component of the CIP is a narrative kind of summarizing the material I've covered tonight about how we put it together um, and the general highlights of investments that are included. The Appendix A lists individual CIP investment organized by MassDOT division and then roughly by uh, municipality, uh, rail system, uh, RTA, et cetera, depending on uh, the, the modal category that you're looking at. Um, and then finally, Appendix B describes the CIP investment programs in more detail. So again, this is a draft um, working forward from here. Uh, leading up to the, the board's final discussion of the CIP in July. Uh, we'll reflect in the next version of the document any changes in spending since the draft release, as well as results of an equity analysis that looks at MassDOT and MBTA investments and how they're distributed across the Commonwealth and how they measure with respect to geographic and social equity in terms of uh, spending for environmental justice and Title VI populations. 
So talking a little bit more about public engagement, um, again, our public comment period is running through June 20th and July 10th. Um, we had a legislative briefing this morning. Uh, tonight, uh, this afternoon, tonight are the first of our public meetings. So again, we thank you for being here. Um, there are shown in the map on the right-hand portion of the slide. Um, so we have several other meetings happening uh, later this and next week. So if you know folks who wanted to attend a meeting, um, they all cover the same basic content with some region-specific highlights, and we accept comment on any aspect of the CIP at any meeting. So if you know of others, again, who would like to participate, uh, they're definitely welcome at one of the other meetings. Also continuing to work with our MPO partners on, and other stakeholder organizations to share information and encourage comment. Uh, we accept comment in various formats, uh, including email, letters, um, or uh, comments through our web-based comment tool, which I'll talk about in a minute. Following the conclusion of this comment period, we'll be sharing all this feedback with the MassDOT Board of Directors, along with any proposed changes to the CIP, which will be discussed at their July 17th meeting. So this is just a quick snapshot of MassDOT's public comment tool. You can uh, visit it uh, either through visiting our main website at mass.gov slash CIP or by uh, scanning the uh, QR code here. Uh, so this gives you the ability to filter and explore different projects. And uh, if you click on a particular project that's included in the CIP, there is a place as shown in the screen cap where you can uh, provide your comment on that specific project. So again, another opportunity to explore the CIP and, and provide comments in a targeted way. So just want to talk a little bit about how we use the feedback that we get on the CIP. Um, it's shared, you know, regardless of the type of feedback, we share it across divisions and with our planning partners, such as the MBTA. Uh, we handle uh, the, the comments uh, a little bit depending on the, the nature of the comment and what it's focused on. So comments for projects that may already be in the CIP, either in future years or that are already underway, we share with MassDOT divisions to support project development and construction and implementation. Comments on projects that are not yet included in the CIP are also shared across divisions to indicate the level of public interest in the project. Uh, in some cases, these conversations also uh, help us get going uh, and get projects going through the initiation process after uh, comments on the CIP are provided to the district and that conversation between district and municipality can get started. At the program and priority level, feedback um, on these programs helps inform whether we create new programs or how we size the programs that we have. Um, the development process overall, any comments that we get about that uh, informs our broader strategy about how we uh, support investment decisions and how we engage Massachusetts residents and organizations about the content of the CIP. So just wanna close um, with uh, a tangential item, but one we, we want to bring to folks' attention as well. So MassDOT is currently engaging in the Massachusetts Travel Study. Uh, this is a survey effort to collect information about how people use uh, transportation on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this helps us understand how people are using various parts of the system from the road network, uh, transit, bike lanes, sidewalks, etc. cetera. Um, and this you know, it also gives us guidance on how these uh, facilities can be improved in the future so really this work is helping to inform future policy and in turn future CIPs. Um, individual households uh, throughout Massachusetts have been invited through a random sampling method uh, to get the best coverage that we can. If your household has received a invitation to the survey, we really hope you'll participate. Uh, there's more information uh, on the Massachusetts Travel Study website uh, about ways you can provide your um, survey responses um, and any questions you may have about the survey process. So definitely encourage folks just to check that out. Uh, so that is the conclusion of my remarks about the CIP. Um, at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague Miranda to handle the question and answer portion. Bryce, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Miranda, for passing that on to me. So thank you so much, everyone, for listening up to this point, and we will proceed with the question and answer portion. So thank you, Michelle. To ask a question verbally, please use the raise hand icon, and we'll give you access to unmute your microphone. 
Please state your name and share only one question at a time so everyone has the chance to participate. You may also submit written questions or comments to the host using the chat panel and we will read them out loud. To ask a question on the phone, dial star nine and we will call out the last four digits of your number and unmute your audio. I think we can start here. We have a question from Gabriela Ilario. Does MassDOT plan to include the restoration of the Northern Tier Railroad in the fiscal year 25 to 29 CIP? Thanks very much for that question. Um, again, I know that a number of the um, uh, components of various portions of the rail network are incorporated um, throughout the different rail programs. Just seeing if my colleague, um, Andy Koziel from the Rail and Transit Division is available to answer that question. Um, if not, that's something we can definitely uh, take back and review with our Rail and Transit Division colleagues. Yes, I, I, I'm, I am available, Michelle, I'm here. Uh, Andy Koziel, I'm the West East Rail Director within uh, MassDOT's Rail and Transit Division. Uh, so specifically for Nor uh, Northern Tier. So Northern Tier is uh, in the planning phase right now. There's an active study that I, I'm sure you know uh, that is being conducted by the Office of Transportation Planning, which is actually not within the Rail and Transit Division that, that I'm a part of. Uh, because it is in the study phase right now, uh, the actual recommendations have, have not been concluded. Uh, if there is a conclusion to, to advance certain portions of it, they, they would be included or in the CIP once funding was made available. But as I understand it, well, I could speak with certainty that Rail and Transit Division does not have capital projects in place right now to advance Northern Tier. And uh, I, I I don't know, if Michelle, if you can confirm that there there is no other study aspects. I, I'm not sure uh, whether other divisions had any aspect of Northern Tier, but uh, Rail and Transit Division does not. Uh, and right now we are awaiting the final recommendations from the study. Thanks, Andy. Um, I don't have any further feedback on that item, but I will take that back to um, my uh, Office of Transportation planning colleagues. So thanks very, very much for that question. Thank you, Michelle and Andy. Next question by Carrie Lee. This is a question specific to the Northern Tier Railway Restoration Project. Which category does the project fit into according to MassDOT and which municipalities is MassDOT working with for it? Yeah, I guess perhaps um, this is a question that, uh, Michelle, maybe you could help me with because uh, I, I don't believe that Northern Tier would continue as a fiscal 25 project. Uh, it might show up as a pre-25 spending uh, because because it was funded during the, the last fiscal year. Uh, so I, I'm not sure how it was categorized uh, based on the, the, the um, based on the different options that the CIP has. Um, so, so I'm sorry, I, I don't know which category you would speak to, but uh, my understanding is that it is not included uh, in the 25 to 29 spending years. I don't believe we have any um, planning work. This would probably uh, be incorporated into um, our overall uh, state planning and research work planning work program, which is uh, as part of the spending for our Office of Transportation Planning. But again, I, I'm not sure that we have, I, I believe you're correct that this would be um, pre-25 spending for the work that's um, informed uh, the Northern tier activities to date. Thank you so much. Next question by Christopher Willenborg. I would like to comment on the MassDOT Aeronautics Division Capital Investment Plan. Okay, um, Christopher, if you're, you're comfortable, maybe we can, um, if you'd like to comment verbally, we can um, maybe elevate you for a panelist if you'd like to, to address the full group. Hi, can you hear me? Can, thank you. All right, sounds good. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Chris Willemborg. I'm the airport manager at Westfield Barnes Regional Airport here in Western Massachusetts, as well as president of the Massachusetts Airport Management Association. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the MassDOT Secretary of Transportation, uh, Secretary Monica tibbetts nutt the MassDOT Board of Directors, and MassDOT Aeronautics Senior Leadership Team for their diligent work. 
on recognizing the future needs of airports statewide and the opportunity to comment on the uh, draft capital investment plan. Our Massachusetts Airport Management Association has approximately 150 members representing airport industry stakeholders across the Commonwealth. The draft capital investment plan for the aeronautics division proposes a total of $577.3 million over a five-year period that focuses on reliability and modernization of 35 public use airports across Commonwealth. According to the MassDOT Statewide Airport Economic Impact Study, the statewide system of public use airports in the Commonwealth provide nearly 200,000 direct and indirect jobs with an economic output of $24 billion annually. This proposed capital investment funding will assist eligible FAA airport improvement program airports to leverage federal funding for high priority safety projects. In addition, the proposed funding is critical to support numerous statewide airport programs, such as airfield markings, airfield crack sealing, vegetation management, airport system planning, airport administration buildings, and airport security projects. These programs will greatly assist in enhancing safety and security at our 35 public use airports, including 10 privately owned public use airports that play a critical role in the statewide system of airports. Just on behalf of West of Barnes Regional Airport and our Massachusetts Airport Management Association, we would respectfully request that the MassDOT Board of Directors support the proposed $577.3 million capital investment program for the MassDOT Aeronautics Division. Thank you. Thanks very much for your support. <clears throat> Thank you. We have a question from Rep Sabadosa, an elected official. A few years ago, positive train control on the Knowledge Corridor was included in the CIP, but was removed pending a grant application, which was ultimately unsuccessful. Is there a plan to include it? And the, Rep Sabadosa wants to inform us that this is indeed Indeed, Rep. Sabadoza and seems to be registered under uh, Chris Calafatidis from their office. Hey, good afternoon, Rep. Sabadoza, uh, or your alter ego, Chris Calafatidis. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, PDC is included, and it, it maybe not um, not as straightforward in the early years. So, we we do. There's a line item that's included for fiber optic cable on the knowledge corridor. So right now, the Rail and Transit Division is advancing um, the installation of fiber optic cables, right? We have a design underway right now. We have uh, procured the cable itself. So, so that itself is not PTC, but it is the necessary infrastructure for future PTC. Uh, there is a separate line item right now that uh, in the out years, as we plan PTC for uh, future implementation, uh, so uh, it, it is accounted for and the, the planning is underway and it, it's, it's towards the back end of the, the, the CIP. That is truly wonderful news. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the question. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Leslie, please go ahead. Leslie Roberts. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi. Um, I just heard about this meeting an hour ago, so I, I didn't really have time to prepare a, a more um, well thought out statement. So please forgive me for that. But um, I, I work as the grant development director for the town of Northfield. Um, and I just wanted to provide a comment about the SIP because we have a project here that's really important to us that is not incorporated into the plan. Um, the, the Shell Bridge has uh, been located in the town for quite some time, but was closed in 1985 because of structural deficiencies. Um, and this project has two decades of community support and organizing from residents in the town to replace the bridge um, for safety reasons, but to replace it as well as a, a bicycle pedestrian use bridge, um, which supports many of the town's goals as well as goals um, of the Healy Driscoll administration. And um, it's it's a very important project for us. We've applied for grant federal grant funds multiple times um, together with MassDOT and unfortunately haven't been successful. 
We are planning to apply to the RCN grant program in September and um, ensuring that this project is, is represented on the SIP would really go a long way for us in terms of um, being in a better position to try and secure those funds. Forgive me for that alarm. Um, particularly because the RCN program is, is making all the remaining available funds available with this with this round. Um, so this is a very important, even more important than the, the past um, applications that we have submitted because of the amount of funding that's available for this project. Um, so we really want to put our best foot forward and, and being represented on the plan would help us to achieve that. So thanks for, for taking the time to let me speak. Thanks very much, Leslie. We we appreciate the the, the feedback and the, and the updates on um, the town of Northfield's plans to to continue applications. And I'll I'll definitely be taking uh, that that feedback uh, back to my colleagues, at both in OTP and the the highway division, uh, so they're they're aware of the next steps. And, and thank you for your your continued communi communication of your support for this project. Thank you. We have another question from Stephen Ellis. I would like to comment in support of several projects proposed to be funded in the town of Montague and to urge sufficient funding to be allocated to ensure their completion. Uh, thank you, Stephen. If you'd like to um, talk specifically about um, you know, speak to the projects in particular, we're happy to, you know, to, to make you a, temporarily a panelist to be able to give your comments if you're comfortable with that. Of course, I'd be happy to do so. And thank you so much uh, to your team for putting this together today. Um, I just wanted to take an opportunity uh, on behalf of the town of Montague, uh, first and foremost, to thank MassDOT uh, for its consideration relative to several important projects that um, are included in the, the uh, SIP this year. Um, we understood that they would likely be there and it was very uh, important to us in affirming that they continue to be there. Um, these include perhaps, you know, uh, among all others, our, our great concern and the incredible need for project ID 612799, which will replace um, a suite, a set of bridges, three bridges um, that provide a critical link between the town of Montague and the city of Greenfield. Um, there are three other projects uh, where we have bridges, two bridges that are either closed or soon would be fully closed um, on South Street, that is bridge uh, project ID 609427 and on North Leverett Road 612164. And we are gratified to see that those projects will be attended to. Likewise, close to that um, bridge on North Leverett Road, um, there's a very dangerous intersection at Route 63, uh, Project 610656, and we want to express our uh, great support for that. As we look at all of these projects and as the central uh, region representative to the um, Franklin County Transportation Planning Organization, I guess my biggest anxiety just relates to escalating construction costs and making certain that, you know, these numbers for some of these projects have not changed substantively that I can see from previous year's tips. And I don't know whether you can comment on whether that is anything we should be concerned about or not. Um, but I do worry that unless they were initially gross overestimations of cost, we could find ourselves unable to complete or forced to cut corners that we don't want to. Before I let you answer that question, I also want to thank you for um, DOT Aeronautics um, investments in the Turner's Falls Airport. It's a small rural airport that, quite frankly, is struggling to survive economically. And both of the intended projects, um, the Pioneer Apron and Taxiway Realignment and Construction Project, is, that's absolutely critical, as is the extension of the runway. So, um, you know, with all of those thank yous and plaudits, I'll allow you to respond to my question if you have a response to that question at this time. Sure. So I, I you know, I definitely appreciate the concern, and that's you know something that we um, we we <laughs> are are dealing with a lot and considering a lot as as construction costs have continued to to 
stay elevated or to rise in, in recent years. And with respect to the um, you know costs, what we do with when we produce the CIP is we you know of course work with our um, various uh, divisions to collect kind of the most up to date um, cash flow estimates and and over all project costs at, at various points in time and produce and you know for for our highway division for example those um you know costs are submitted to us kind of multiple times over the uh capital investment process and and typically you know new and new um cost estimates are released depending on uh projects hitting a major milestone in design be that like 25 percent design when public hearings typically take place or 75 percent design and you know when projects reach those stages, there's dialogue between um, NASDAQ and, you know, the, the relevant municipalities and MPOs about um, working to address um, project cost needs to the extent that's possible. So what's in the CIP um, is based on, you know, our, our collaboration uh, with the, the, the highway division over the next several months, but we, you know, are definitely monitoring these projects on an ongoing basis. And as those cost increases uh, do arise, especially as projects are are moving uh, through their design stage, we, we continue to work with our partners to address those. Okay, thank you very much, Michelle. Um, as stated, all of these projects are of partic particularly critical nature. Um, you know, we probably from a community and state level, um, you know, waited a little bit too long on several of them. And so they're all urgent matters. And we hope that without respect to what the budget figures may ultimately be amended to be, um, the DOT will maintain its commitment to executing these projects. They are critical for our community, and we thank you. Thank you for your expression of support. Thank you. We have another question from Paula Consolini. Thank you for your work and for this opportunity to provide input for this comprehensive plan. You mentioned that the plan is updated annually. Can you share with us how the interim update process works? Sure. So if I could answer a, or ask a, a clarifying question, do you mean um, how uh, CIP is managed kind of in between um, these annual, you know, developments of a draft? Yes. Okay. Um, so typically, you know, our, our practice has not been to do formal updates uh, to the CIP, uh, you know, in between these kind of annual development cycles. However, um, our capital investments are being uh, managed on an ongoing basis. And so you'll see that come up uh, through a couple of different aspects of parallel processes. So for example, um, at the, the MassDOT level, uh, there's updates made uh, to the MassDOT board of directors about the status of projects and um, particularly when uh, contracts for projects over 15 million uh, need to be approved by the MassDOT Board of Directors. Um, there, there's dialogue that happens at MassDOT Board of Directors meetings, uh, including with their uh, Capital Programs Committee. Um, for projects on the federal aid side, uh, there's dialogue that happens at the Metropolitan Planning Organization level uh, to talk about the status of those projects. Um, so while there's may not be you know active production of updated capital investment plans between uh, you know, our, our annual release of a, a draft in the late spring, early summer, um, you know, there, there's always ongoing work and conversation about how we can keep these projects moving forward. Thank you. Please note that you can put your question in the Q&A box or you can raise your hand and you can, that, that's one way and two ways in which you could ask questions to our panel. Perhaps while folks are thinking of other questions, one other item I want to highlight um, just about the, the compilation of, of comment and feedback through this process. So one of the things that we do um, with the comments that we receive, you know, we share them with the MassDOT Board of Directors. There'll be, you know, a brief discussion of the types of feedback uh, that we've heard with the directors at the upcoming Capital Programs Committee and MassDOT Board meeting scheduled for July. Um, at the conclusion of the CIP process, we also post a um, matrix of the, summarizing the types of comments that we received and the, the different projects that have been commented on. 
uh, along with a, a response from MassDOT based on collaboration with our um, divisions. And so, you know, at the conclusion of this process later this summer, uh, you'll be able to um, check out a, a response table that, that highlights some of the things that came up during this public feedback process. So again, um, if you're interested in commenting, kind of following the, the conversation tonight, definitely feel free to check out um, mass.gov slash CIP. Um, our Developing the Capital Investment Plan page uh, highlights, um, you know, uh, the ways that we receive comment. Um, there's also, you know, our ways to, uh, if you want to write uh, specific letters, um, that address is also made available on that website directed to um uh, Math DOT, uh, Attention Manager of Capital Planning, 10th Park Plaza, Suite 4150, um, Boston, Massachusetts, 02116. Um, so if there are no other questions, I want to thank everyone for their time and feedback tonight, and I hope you have a great uh, Massachusetts Department of Transportation.